Sega's story is an example of triumph and tribulation in the ever-evolving landscape of the video game industry. From its intentional rise as a leading video game company to its downfall and then its recovery. Sega's journey is marked by both remarkable achievements and big challenges. The company's first name was Standard Games and was founded in Hawaii in 1940 while providing coin operated games for military bases such as slot machines and jute boxes. Then the company moved to Japan in 1952 and was renamed to Service Games of Japan where they focused on providing coin operated amusement machines to the US. Then in 1960 they merged with Rosen Enterprises to become Sega Enterprises. By the early 1980s, Sega was firmly established as a leader in arcade gaming and had produced hits like Periscope in 1966 and Jet Rocket in 1970. Sega's arcade success continued with games like Space Harrier in 1985 and Outrun in 1986 which showcased the company's commitment to putting out high quality games. These titles were not just successful, but also demonstrated Sega's capacity for technical advancement and creative game design. Then came the launch of Sega's first home video game console, the SG-1000, released in Japan on July 15, 1983, and later in November in Australia and New Zealand. It was developed in response to a decline in the arcade game market in the early 1980s. The SG-1000 did sell well for Sega, but there was another system that Sega was planning to release only two years later. That being the Sega Master System that arrived in 1985. This was a pivotal moment for the company. Though it faced stiff competition from Nintendo's entertainment system, aka NES, the Master System carved out a niche with its innovative hardware and strong game library. However, it was the Sega Genesis, known as the Sega Mega Drive outside of North America, that truly cemented Sega's status as a major player in the video game industry. Released in 1989 in North America and 1990 in Japan and Europe, its 16-bit architecture offered a significant leap in processing power compared to the 8-bit consoles like the NES. The Genesis was a powerful console that boosted superior graphics and sound compared to its competitors. It quickly gained traction and was a big hit in the North American market. Sega's aggressive marketing strategy played a crucial role in the Genesis success. The company positioned itself as a challenger to Nintendo dominance with the slogan, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. What Nintendo don't. Also what helped was that the system had a series of successful games such as Streets of Rage, Shining Force, and Sonic the Hedgehog. Speaking of Sonic, he did become Sega's mascot, a symbol of the console's competitive edge and creativity. The Genesis era was Sega's golden years, giving them a strong foothold in the gaming market. In 1991, Sega released a Sega CD that was a add-on to the Genesis. It plays CD games and audio CDs. Also, it added a faster CPU and graphic enhancements. This add-on was somewhat successful, but it didn't meet Sega's expectations and was discontinued so the company could focus on their next console. Also in 1991 in North America, Sega released their first handheld that they hoped would be able to compete with Nintendo's Game Boy. That being the Game Gear. The handheld was successful for Sega, selling a little over 10 million units, but the Game Boy outsold it with a total of 118 million units. So yeah, that wasn't even a competition looking at those numbers. Despite its early success, Sega began to fall in the mid-90s, starting with the release of the Sega Saturn in 1994. This console was intended to build on the success of the Genesis, but faltered due to poor timing and an underwhelming marketing strategy. First, the console released in North America in June 1995, about six months earlier than planned. This move was an attempt to beat Sony's PlayStation to the market, but it also caught many realtors and developers off guard. The PlayStation had superior graphics, and Sony aggressive marketing strategies made it a more attractive option for gamers. Also, the PlayStation had more games to choose from at launch than the Saturn did. But the big problem was the price. 
The Saturn launched at $400, which was higher than its competitors. This price point, combined with the lack of compelling games, just made the console less appealing to consumers. Then came the launch of the Sega Dreamcast in 1999. This was a last ditch effort to regain market dominance. At first, the Dreamcast showed promise with innovative features like built-in modern support for online play and an impressive lineup of games. However, the Dreamcast was launched during a time of growing competition from Sony's PlayStation 2, which quickly overshadowed Sega's offering. The PlayStation 2's superior graphics, extensive game library, and strong brand loyalty led to a sharp decline in Dreamcast sales. Honestly, the Dreamcast suffered due to the overwhelming presence of the PlayStation 2 and other factors such as Sega's financial difficulties and negative press. But we did get some great games from this console, such as Sonic Avenger 1 and 2, Shimu, and Jet Grind Radio, just to name a few. Then came a year that would change Sega for good, 2001, the year they made the difficult decision to exit the console hardware market altogether, a transition to a software focused company only. Now despite its exit from the console market, Sega's story did not end with this downfall like most. The company underwent a big transformation, redirecting its efforts towards software development and publishing. This pivot allowed Sega to continue thriving in the industry in a different capacity as a third party developer. This transition allowed Sega to focus on creating games for other platforms, including those of its former competitors, that being Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. One of Sega's notable successes in this new era was keeping their beloved franchises alive. The Yakuza series, which debuted in 2005, became a critical and commercial success. It's known for its deep storytelling and engaging gameplay. This series continues until this day. Other notable games include Total War, developed by Creative Assembly, Football Manager, developed by Sports Interactive, and Persona developed by Atlas. Those franchises are developed by other studios, but they are all owned by Sega. These franchises help secure Sega's reputation as a leading game publisher. Sonic the Hedgehog saw a revival with new titles that, while met with mixed reviews and mixed sales, still help maintain the franchise's relevance in the gaming world. He now even makes appearances in games with Mario such as Summer Olympic Games. Sonic is still releasing games today and still having mixed reviews, but he has expanded to the big screen as well. With his movie self-titled Sonic the Hedgehog being a big hit in 2020, followed by a hit sequel in 2022 and an upcoming movie in December 2024 as the recording of this video. Sega also capitalized on his rich catalog of classic games through various re-releases and compilations. The company embraced digital distribution and mobile gaming, expanding its reach beyond traditional console platformers and also releasing their titles on PC. In recent years, Sega has continued to demonstrate relevance and adaptability. The company's partnership with other developers, investing in new game genres, and exploration of emerging technologies like virtual reality have kept it relevant in a highly competitive market. Sega's history is a fascinating narrative of innovation, setbacks, and recovery. From its early days of arcade success to its rise as a console powerhouse with the Genesis, Sega's journey through the challenges of the Saturn and Dreamcast eras and its rebirth as a leading third-party developer highlights the company's relevance and adaptability. Sega's ability to reinvent itself and stay relevant in a quick-changing industry speaks to its enduring legacy and commitment to innovation. As the company continues to explore new opportunities and embrace emerging technologies, its story remains one of the most compelling in the video game industry.